Hey, what's going on guys? Rudelanel here bringing you back with another Python tutorial. Uh, let's fire up idle and see what we can do. I'm going to create a uh, new window here as always. Save this as uh, file.python. Get our shebang line going on here. Environment Python. We can create a new class. Call it base as usual. Run through our new constructor. Pass in the self keyword. Print out, uh, yeah, we don't have to do anything just yet. Actually, yeah, we probably should. It's a good practice, I guess. I, gu I guess, like, using the print function is really too much practice, but, uh, whatever. Finish up our little skeleton code here. And we should be set. Root equals the object from the base class. That should work okay. Save that. Awesome. Should work fine. Alright. Now, in today's video, we're checking out uh, strings. We're looking at some of the functions that we can work with the string data type. And remember, string... String was a uh, self.string, because we're inside of an object. Self.strings... This can be any sort of mass of text or characters. So, in our case, we'll just say strings are the coolest thing ever. And we're done. Now, with these strings, you can do a lot of really interesting things. In our case, you can maybe capitalize it, and that's the function we're going to be looking at today. Capitalize. Capitalize. And what that will do is capitalize the first... Pos the, any, whatever character is at the first position of your string. So let's try that. Let's see um, print self.string and then side beside and then right beside it we can check out self.string dot capitalize strings are the coolest things ever with a lowercase s because that's the way we set the string and then strings with a capital s because we've capitalized it with that function so uh... let's take a look at how we would set that up all on our own let's create a new function here i'm gonna call mine uh... capitalize keep it easy we're going to need a self keyword because we're creating a function inside of an object. And then, of course, we need the string that we're working with. We can define that here, and now we can get started. Before we jump in, though, we need to be able to make sure we understand the differences between lowercase and uppercase letters. And the program has to be able to know that, too. So let's create our uh, some arrays that are going to be able to hold all these information. So lowercase is going to start as a blank array, and then we can do a start lowercase. Actually, remember, these all should have self preceding them. And then start lowercase is going to be an integer, and in our case, it's going to be a uh, 97. And now we're going to need the end lowercase, and that can be uh, 123. Now you might be asking, why are we using these numbers? And uh, for anyone that is well acquainted with their ASCII table, or the ASCII table, you know that 97 is the number for the lowercase a, and 123 is going to give us, uh, actually 122 will give us the lowercase z, but we want to have that one number above, because remember we're using the range function here when we're looping. So we have that information. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this for i in range, self dot start lowercase and self dot end lowercase we're going to be able to use these ASCII numbers to return the lowercase characters so we can just say self dot lowercase we're going to append on there the character or at least an array version of the character form of this number so chr is the function that will allow us to get the ASCII information for that number so now let's try this with uppercase. We're going to want to set all this up again. We'll change this to uppercase. Change this to uh, uppercase. Oh, better remove that last case and then upper once more. Upper once more. This is becoming a chore. <laughs> Get that? That's such a good joke, isn't it? I'm just kidding. Uppercase, and then we'll change this again to uppercase. Now we have to change the numbers, of course. It's not just going to get us that thing. So we have to change this, in this turn, to 65, 
and 91, because 65 will denote the beginning of the alphabet in uppercase letters, and 91 is actually, 90 is the end, but we need that number one offset, remember. So if we print out, now that we've got all these set, if we print out lowercase, and then we print out uppercase, you'll be able to see, oh, remember we have to have our self keyword here, it's still not going to get us anywhere because we have not run this function yet. We should probably put this inside of our constructor. In fact, that's a very good idea because we want to have these initialized immediately and we want to keep that information throughout this entire code. So when we run this, oh, we have a problem because I did not pass on our new function here. Pass. Now I can run this again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. All we have are these lowercase letters that we've just retrieved from the ASCII table, and then right below it we have another array that are all the uppercase letters from the ASCII table. So now we're able to manipulate some things. We can see what we're doing here. So let's just hop back over to our capitalized function, and let's start. We can start. We can begin with a conditional statement to see what the first character is in the, uh, in the string. And remember, we're going to index here with zero. And if that is in lowercase, or that array that we've already created. So if it starts with a lowercase letter, we're going to be able to uh, get the length of the lowercase, because this is what we need to know if we're going to be looping through it, which we are going to be. So size of lowercase, in our case this is going to be an integer variable, can be the length of self.lowercase. That's a good reminder that this has to be self as well. Actually this doesn't, because this is inside of a function actually. And it looks like that's all we need for now. We can do um, for i in in range, so we're going to count through all of that number. We can get a keep counting up until we get to the size of lowercase, and we can use this to index that, that array. We're going to pass in size of lowercase for the range function. Get started with our code block here. And now we can test again. If the lowercase version if at least what we're seeing in, in the lowercase array is that string variable that we're looking at at the beginning, then what we can do is we can use this i variable, or that number that we've been looping with, and send that to the uppercase array. So we can set string equal to self dot uppercase. So we get the uppercase version of that letter because they're all indexed in that same way, that same numerical order. And then we can add on concatenate the string, and we're going to use slicing here from beginning at that, w that second character, that next one, and we'll use a colon to get to the end of the string. So we're going to go from here to here, and all, and all we we're doing is replacing this, this first character with the one that we need. So when we're done looping, we can return string, this new variable that we've set up. So if we go in here, if we go into our uh, our constructor here and we run print dot self dot string, we're gonna have strings are the coolest things ever without it being capitalized because we've only initialized it that way. But if we print self dot capitalize with self dot string in there, we'll have this capital strings are the coolest thing ever. And that's because we've just created all of this code that will loop through the array that we've been setting up with uppercase and lowercase letters from the ASCII table, and now we have a lot more information to work with. So yeah, that's all there is in this tutorial. We're being able to capitalize strings one by one, and we are set. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know this one might be a little bit hard to bear through because I made a couple mistakes here. Uh, at least I think so. But hey, that always leaves room for improvement, and that goes the same way for you. I will see you in the next tutorial, guys. Goodbye.